Bro, y'all gotta stop this, shit, bro. Like, stop, stop clout chasing. It was no helicopters, no creatures, none of that. Stop. And for the people online looking at this, stuff, y'all gotta stop believing them. Seriously, stop. Is he right? <laughs> G'day guys, this is Holy Critics signing in, and today I'm releasing my final episode in the Alien Trilogy, unless another development happens down the road. But for now, you're going to hear from multiple witnesses who've now come forward, including a couple of cops who were apparently serving on duty that fateful night on New Year's Day in Miami. You're also going to hear from eyewitnesses who are going to give their harrowing testimonies, including one who claims that the footage she took was deleted from her phone under duress. And finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all these testimonies and I'm going to see if it lines up with some of the video evidence that we have collected. And also you're going to hear from a expert opinion who's got some quite interesting perspectives on the case. So you're not going to hear too much from me in this video because I've probably already said enough on the matter. I've said my piece. Now I'm going to let these people speak for themselves. January 2nd, 2024, with the whole Bayside situation, y'all got to be stopped. Y'all got to stop believing these people on TikTok and social media and all. Man, y'all got to be stopped. In regards to this uh, Bayside incident, we did not respond because it was nine foot, ten foot creatures and all this other bull y'all got going on. Bro, I'm going to make this short, sweet, and simple. There was no black ops helicopter circling around the entire mall or any of that shit. There's no creatures, no nothing. It was a bunch of juveniles fighting and throwing fireworks at people. That's why we responded. Bro, y'all gotta stop this shit, bro. Like, stop. Stop clout chasing. It was no helicopters, no creatures, none of that. Stop. And for the people online looking at this stuff, y'all gotta stop believing them. Seriously. There you go. A guy in his Miami police uniform. Seems a little choppy though, doesn't it? You see he's cut that video a lot, like he was trying to get his story straight there. There would have been at least a police helicopter in the sky, so him saying there was no, no helicopters, but yet 100 plus police cars, that doesn't quite line up. But it gets even more dubious with the next cop you're about to watch. Apparently in this video, you've got the son of a Miami sheriff, and he rings up his father, asking him about the event, and just hear his response, or lack thereof, might I say. How have I not heard about this? My dad's a police officer in Miami, and I mean, like, he's even running for sheriff, and I, I just talked to him. He didn't say anything about that. Interesting. Hey. Hey, did you, uh, have you been seeing the alien stuff? Did you see that in, at, at Bayside? Are you serious? You're you're joking. You're joking. Did they tell you not to talk about it? How many times have we were just slicing the pie? I'm not allowed to talk about it. What? I I do know what you're talking about, but I'm not allowed to talk about it. Can you okay, can you at least say like whatever? So okay, so they're saying it's like a um like a fight broke out. Why did they send so many police cars? Are you serious? You can't say it. You can't say any. You're no help, dude. Okay, so this guy got briefed and was told that it was basically a classified event. But if that's the case, why did the previous cop speak out? Was he not following his orders? Or was he a patsy of sorts to give out this sort of weak answer as to what happened that night? I'm just asking the questions, guys. I'm not saying yay or nay to this. It's just rather odd that you've got two people who work for the Miami Police Department and one is keeping mum about the story and the other is blabbing. But yet what he's saying has no substance to it. So now you're going to hear from a British tourist who was in the mall that night and just listen to what she says about the footage that she took and who threatened her to delete it. 
Here's really what went down in Miami just a few nights ago. Now, I was contemplating whether or not I wanted to make this video because I think I've already been blacklisted online from a couple different places, but I'm very pro free speech, so I'm gonna tell the truth anyway about what I saw. Now, I'm driving down in Miami with a girlfriend pretty late at night, and I suddenly see hundreds, and I mean hundreds of cop cars swarming the entire city, the entire area. You could literally hear the sirens from over a mile away. I've never seen anything like this. Guys, I've been in Miami three years and I've never seen a response like this. I genuinely thought that there was some kind of terrorist attack. It was honestly frightening. So obviously I'm curious, I pull up the car, we get out and we start talking to people. People are pretty calm. Um, I'm talking to them, I'm asking them what's going on. Um, and one person told me that they were at the Bayside Marketplace and, and again, these are their words, I, I'm, I kid you not. They told me that they saw a creature, I know it sounds ridiculous, seven feet tall walking around. I was like, this is insane. So, I, so I'm like, this person's crazy. I go and talk to another woman who's there in a state of actual panic. And she tells me that she saw something out of a movie. She said it looked like Alien from the Alien film in the 1980s, I think she said it was. It, it's insane. So I get out my phone, right? Because I want to film this and I want to get these interviews for you guys because no one's going to believe what happened. And so I get out my phone and I start recording. The police come running over to me and they take my phone and make me delete the couple seconds that I recorded. And then they ushered me along. Obviously, this is Miami PD, the cops in America, I don't wanna mess with them. No, they have to get a warrant to take your phone like that, but she didn't wanna cause any waves. So unfortunately, her witness interviews never made it to air. They're not like the cops in England. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. So I delete the footage and I move along. Anyway, I get back into my car and I see choppers in the sky. And it's just insane because the police are saying the official story is that there were just juvenile kids playing with fireworks. Why was there a chopper in the sky? Why was there a chopper in the sky? Here you got another witness saying that. Yet you heard the, the first cop say, no such thing, no aliens and no helicopters. That's where you catch him. He threw that one in there. He knew, he knew that most people don't believe in aliens, but to say there was no police helicopter in the sky at the very least, that kind of refutes his statements. Why were there hundreds, and I mean hundreds, of police cars? Why did it look like some kind of 9-11 response? I've never seen anything like this. I really can not believe that. it. Anyway, so there's these choppers in the sky, and they're shining these lights down as if they're like looking for something. And I see a small glimpse of something. I don't know what it was. It didn't look like juvenile kids playing. It looked like something that wasn't human and it actually freaked me out. So we got back into the car, we started driving and then you could see, and this is, and you can, you guys can look this up. The electricity in the surrounding area went out. Explain that to me. Why does the electricity in the surrounding area go out just because some kids are playing with fireworks? It makes no sense. So there you go. You've got one more witness who's now weighed in on her opinion. Others that you're going to hear from will also corroborate her story. But she used a very specific uh, way to describe the alien. She said it looked like the one from the 1970s movie, uh, a xenomorph, I think it's called. Well, if I look at some of the as yet unconfirmed images, do you see any features that may look like a xenomorph? Got that one there. We've got this one here, which I think personally looks a little bit like CGI, but have a look. You got that one there and then of course you've got the one that all of you have probably seen okay let's continue man what's up y'all i'm here to set the record straight man like i literally have been getting interrogated by the miami police department for days my dude i look look at me <laughs> Um, it is really aliens. It's really aliens. And I cannot believe that the Miami Police Department is really going to try to make it seem like they had all those ca police cars and stuff out there over some kids fighting, y'all. We talking about three and four blocks. We get in it. We... 
they asked us first. They asked us what we saw. It was me, two of my cousins, and one of my homegirls. Is he sure that he wasn't arrested for assaulting people? Because there was that going on as well that night. All three of us being basically locked the f up. I ain't trying to get in trouble or nothing like that, but I'm just telling y'all, man. This shit is so real, man. Like, everybody saw it. There will be more reports coming out. There will be more reports coming out on this, man. But I just wanted to go on record and speak my truth. You know, they asked us not to speak about it. Any any blog site, any news site, anybody who wants to talk to me, please get in my DM, man. Because that's the only way I would tell my whole truth. But I just want to let y'all know, man, Aliens are real. It was three of them. There was three aliens, he said there. And the funny thing is, I just showed you three aliens, and they all had a different form to them. One looked like it was bipedal, one looked like it was slithering, and the other was the floating entity. So this was apparently caught on CCTV footage. That looks like it's got legs and arms. Is that one of the aliens he's describing? And then you've got this one here, which is possibly fake. It's probably the most fake looking one of all, but it's crossing traffic there and it's sort of like uh, insectoid, like a spider or a cricket or something. You've got that one there and then you've got the floating one. So there you have it. We've now got two independent witnesses who basically corroborated one another's stories. They were both there that night in the mall. And what did they see? They saw and heard a helicopter. Remember, that first cop vehemently denied that. Number two, they said they had footage deleted from their phones. And number three, they roughly described the alien. In fact, he said there were multiple aliens. So that would explain why different people have slightly different versions of events. Okay, so you might tell me that's just two witnesses. Why don't I give you another one here? Maybe this guy is lying too. Anyway, so as we run in, we look back and we notice some weird shapes taller than me. I'm six foot two, shadowy, dark, solid shapes, not human. I promise you, these is not human. I mean, it made the hair stand up on my skin. Uh, and shit, we just booked it for the doors after that, man. I can't explain what that was. I can't say that was aliens, but I, I can't say that, sh that was not human. It was not human, and they online, I don't know if they're trying to cover this stuff up, but they saying that it was uh, police officers and, and somebody, not shadowy figures. It's 2024, man. It, it's something going on. There's something going on, and they're trying to cover it up. And they're trying to cover it up. Have we got three liars in a row here, all trying to build up their TikTok following? Is that what this is? How many more witnesses need to go on the record before an investigation happens? There was plenty of people there that night. And now they're coming out of the woodwork. Are they all a pack of liars? Look, I could literally show you witness statement after witness statement after witness statement. And this video could blow out to be hours long. But I think for the sake of brevity and not wasting your time, I now want to swing around to the final analysis of the Miami Mall alien incident. And I want to share this video with you from a gentleman who has a very unique and very uh, intriguing perspective on the events that played out that night. Uh, first thing I was asked is, do I think it's a PSYOP? No, I don't. The reason for that is because it doesn't have the hallmarks. Like a PSYOP is a psychological operation, usually done by like, the CIA and their friends. They have some sort of a narrative that they want to push so they can duck some sort of an orchestrated activity and then they leak it out into the media and that kind of stuff to get it out there, to get it planted into the collective unconscious so that we believe whatever story they want us to believe. This has been suppressed. So whatever happened has been suppressed. And something happened. I mean, it's obvious, looking at the videos, this is a crazy police presence, right? Like I've never really seen before for something so ordinary, some kids fighting. I mean, come on, it's Miami. Um, so that was crazy. And then other things that 
lead me to think that maybe something significant happened. You know, flights being grounded, uh, power being out for 30,000 people, uh, people saying they tried to take cell phone pictures and their cell phones weren't working. Or just had their footage straight up deleted by the cops. And then most importantly, the description of the beings. Now this is where it gets super interesting. Super tall, um, with legs, but they didn't walk, they glided. They didn't necessarily even have feet, that they changed shape and form, and that they seemed to kind of click in and out, like they would be there and then they wouldn't be there, almost like a static on a TV or, or you know, something like that, like a hologram that was like kind of glitching out. This is what would happen if there was some sort of an interdimensional bleed over event, meaning like there's other dimensions stacked on top of ours. There's all sorts of stuff outside of the reality that we can perceive. You know, we can only see like a tiny sliver of the visible light spectrum. We can only hear a tiny sliver of sounds. You know, we have very limited senses. Alex Jones and uh, particularly David Icke talk a lot about uh, the different dimensions. The fact that humans only have a limited spectrum of light that we operate within. I think they said only a fraction of the whole universe, but the rest of it, there are potentially other creatures out there that like you said, could bleed into ours. There's all sorts of stuff out there that we don't see and perceive because we don't need to to survive. That's what our central, central nervous system does. It filters all that out so that we're not freaking out with all the sounds and sights and stuff, right? But it doesn't mean it's not there. So if there was some sort of a bleed over, meaning like their dimension momentarily bled over in ours, you would see what these people describe. They just I wonder what caused the bleed over. Was it the uh, the violence that was going on that night? Because there was some violence. There's definitely confirmed footage of people being assaulted in and around the area. Were they observing it? Were they playing a role in it? I don't think they came here to attack or do anything nefarious. The description of them was almost as if they were lost. Now, the way people describe these beings, the way they looked and the way they behaved, is not how people would describe an alien invasion. It's not how they would describe Project Blue Beam. It's not how they would describe, like, there would be no reason to do a PSYOP like this. Because this actually follows the sort of rules of what you'd expect with interdimensionals. This isn't something I think that our government's trying to plant into our subconscious. This is something that I think happens. I think that there are other dimensions full of life. And sometimes, for different reasons, um, whether on purpose or by accident, we bleed over into theirs and they bleed over into ours. It's interesting that he said that they can bleed into our dimension, but we can also bleed into theirs. I didn't think of that. The roles could be reversed. It makes me wonder about uh, DMT, you know, ayahuasca. These people that go on acid trips or whatever you want to call it, where they, they see these creatures uh, and, and they often describe the same types of creatures people that are independent of one another but describing the very same thing it's not an alien invasion it's not blue beam it's not a psyop it's nothing to be scared of or worried about or anything i think this is part of nature this stuff just happens sometimes and sometimes you see these like bleed over events and it freaks you out and because you don't know what to make of it and it seemed like it freaked them out too and um it's kind of nature it's kind of like if you're walking around a corner and and like a bear's there the bear's gonna be like whoa <laughs> where the f you come from? You're gonna be like, whoa, where the f you know what I mean? You're both gonna be kind of scared, right? And you're well, that's not a very good example. A bear might bloody eat your ass. <laughs> well, I think that's a good place to end the video. I hope my trilogy has helped shape your opinion of the incident in question. And if you want to see any of my previous installments, I encourage you to do so by clicking one of the videos you see on your screen. But either way, thanks for watching, and this is Holy Critic. Signing out.